Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's take a look at how we can count spanning trees on a graph. Okay, so we have vertices and edges, and what is a spanning tree? A spanning tree is a subgraph of this, where we just, where we take all the vertices, but we only take some of the edges, such as this. We could do, take that edge, we take that edge, and maybe we could take this edge so that we hit all of the vertices. And we do this using the minimal number of edges to do so. This would be considered a spanning tree and a tree meaning it's actually connected. So it needs to be a connected graph where we hit all the vertices, um, a connected subgraph of a connected graph where we, where we hit all the vertices. Um, and we do so using a minimal number of edges. How many different ways are there of doing this? Well, if you notice, this particular spanning tree has three edges in it. And every single spanning tree will, will have three edges in it. So how do, we, how do we end up getting this type of thing happening? Well, you know, we can just play with this and draw different, different types of things and get something out of it. And and actually do this by hand, but computationally, there's a way of doing this using an incidence matrix. We need to direct our edges a little bit. So let's just put, it doesn't matter what kind of direction we put on it. Just put any kind of direction um, at all and label these as V1, V2, V3, it doesn't matter how you label it, V4. But some magic can be done with the incidence matrix. So let's, proceed. This incidence matrix will have four rows for four vertices. And um, we have how many edges? One, two, three, four, five, six, six edges. So it's going to be a four by six matrix. Okay, so let's think. Um, okay, so let's just take this edge for starters. That one goes from negative one, one, and the next one will be the same to one, one with uh, two zeros following. Okay, then the next one after that would be, um, okay, let's just go down. Here we did these two edges. Um, maybe we'll do uh, this edge right now next. Looks like we go from V3 to V2. Okay, now let's go to this edge. Looks like we go from V1 to V3. To the three. Okay. Now let's go to this edge right here. It looks like we go from V3 to V4. Okay, V3 to V4. And this one right here, we go from V4 to V1. So V4 back up to V1. Okay. So we got an incidence matrix. Now, <clears throat> inside the incidence matrix, itself as we do Smith normal form or try to like do calm operations in particular, really what we're doing is we're eliminating cycles. So here all cycles are eliminated and, um, and the effect is we are done with finding a Smith normal form with three things, which means um, we kind of have a range of three or we can kind of think a de non-zero determinant if we have three if we have like a, some three by three type thing going on. In fact, that's exactly what we do. We just eliminate one whole row of this matrix, of this incidence matrix completely. Um, and then we look at what falls down here and we look for all groupings of groupings of things such, um, uh, such as this column, this column, and maybe that column that such that the determinant of those three columns put together in a matrix would be one, would, would be non-zero. Um, and the neat thing about these, these, this type of figuring with uh, incidence matrix star, the way they're constructed with ones, and negative ones, and so forth, it can be checked that the, if it, the is determinant of such a block is non-zero, it's either going to be plus or minus one. So, that's actually really convenient because it lends into 
volumes, three-dimensional volumes um, uh, in our, uh, a three-dimensional volume in a really big space that's six-dimensional, where you're looking at projections onto different things. It's kind of like the generalized Pythagorean theorem that type idea. The result of figuring out the volume, three-dimensional volume of these three long row vectors in space is exactly what we need for figuring out the number of spanning trees because the projection onto each uh, set of three, um, uh, each uh, um, type of three-dimensional space and with when you have, when choosing three coordinates out of the six, um, each of those will yield a, a projected volume of one. So you're gonna have a one squared look, or um, at least plus or minus one, but if you square it, one squared plus one squared plus one squared, well, however many we have, and then we take a square root, that'll be the, root, the actual volume. Now, instead of actually doing that and counting and figuring out what, what they are here, that's the same amount of work as going through the, through the graph here and figuring out when we actually have it, have it visually. In fact, it may be even more work over here. But computationally, we have a slick way of doing this where we actually just take this matrix and multiply it by its transpose to get a three by three matrix. Then we take that the determinant of that one. Now, albeit it may be a little bit more work than visually seeing it sometimes, but in a large situation, it may even be less work. And it's something that can be programmed pretty easily. So let's see. So it does have its benefits. So you take this, multiply it by its transpose, one, 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 zero, zero, zero. And we get zero, zero, minus one, one, minus one, zero. And zero, 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 one, minus one. All right. So we end up getting three right there in the corner. And let's do this. And that ends up getting what negative one. So right there, then we have this row and that column is just gonna be zero. Then we have this row and the first column. Looks like we're gonna get what, negative one. Then we have this row and the next, and see the column after that, which looks like we're gonna get um, three. Okay, because it's the same thing, okay. And we have that and that, um, which ends up just being simply a negative one. Yep, negative one there. Then you have all of that and that, which would be zero. Then you have that row and that column and negative one there. Um, and then you have this and that, which would just be two. Great. So we have this three by three. The determinant of this three by three will reveal how many spanning trees we have. So to do that, you can do this any number of ways, but I'm just going to go down this column, go kitty corner. So three times this determinant. So three times the determinant three minus one, negative one, two, so you can see my work. And then here, minus negative one times the determinant, what's kitty corner to it. We have a plus sign and a minus sign there. We'll just make that a plus one, a double negative times the determinant what's kitty corner, negative one, zero, uh, negative one, two. And so here we have six minus, uh, so six minus one, um, which would be five. So we get 15. And then here we have a uh, negative two. So next two, it looks like we're supposed to have 13 different spanning trees. Um, you can check this and see if this is really, um, if that's really what you get, 13 by doing it by hand, but to be sure we should come up with 13. So let's think, we know we have this one right here um, and I'm not gonna go through all of them, but then you go from here to here, let's see. So if you go like here, 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 that'd be another one. 
Um, you could do just around like that. You could do replace it with this one and then go around. So you know, you see there's another number of different options. And all said and done, you should come up with 13. Um, so this particular calculation, if accurate, should, um, reveals our result. Thanks for watching.